We've been a leader in banking for more than 100 years. You'll find us here, at home, on your phone, and everywhere you go. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning and welcome to Daily Journal News Break for Wednesday, January 31st. I'm your host, Chris Kiefer, and we're going to take a look at the top news and sports stories from Northeast Mississippi. But first, let's start with your weather forecast. Today we're looking at sunny skies with a high of 61 and a low of 44, 0% chance of rain. Looking ahead at your three-day outlook, Thursday, 80% chance of rain, high of 58, low of 26. Friday, partly cloudy, high of 43, low of 28. And Saturday, again partly cloudy, high of 48, low of 39. Let's take a look now at today's top headlines. Legislation to enact a state lottery died on Tuesday when none of the proposals were taken up in committee. Senate Finance Chairman Joey Fillengain said he opted not to bring up the proposal in his committee because of the opposition in the House of Speaker Philip Gunn. Phil and Gain questioned the need to put members of the Senate through the vote since he did not believe it would pass the House. In response, Gunn said that the Senate handles the legislation as it sees fit and that he cannot speak for them. Gunn has been a vocal opponent of the lottery. However, before the session began, he left open the possibility of the House taking up a lottery proposal if it passed the Senate first. The lottery proposals died on Tuesday because it was the deadline day for general bills to pass out of committee in at least one chamber. It is not clear whether the lottery issue could be revived later this session through an amendment to an existing bill. There appeared to be momentum for lottery legislation this year. Multiple lottery bills were filed, including proposals to direct money to education or to transportation needs. The Lee County School District honored a pair of educators at Tuesday night's school board meeting Plannersville Middle Principal Lindsey Brett was named the district's administrator of the year. Guntown Middle teacher Cindy Wilkins was named the teacher of the year. Wilkins is in her 15th year of teaching, with eight of those years spent at Guntown. She said the students keep her coming back each year. Brett is in her first year as principal at Plannersville after having spent the past two years as the school's assistant principal. She's been an educator for 15 years. Because she's in her first year as principal, Brett said she was shocked to have been chosen for the award. She said she would be lost without the support of other administrators in the district who have helped her as she's learned her new role. She also said her teachers and staff at Plannersville have been her biggest cheerleaders. Mississippi Public Service Commission has charged 16 telemarketing companies for violating the state's no-call law. An investigation conducted by the PSC found that these companies made hundreds of calls to Mississippians who signed up for the no-call list. Officials announced the sanctions on Tuesday. The Telephone Solicitation Act prohibits those attempting to sell consumer goods and services by telephone from calling numbers that appear on the no-call list. In 2016, the Mississippi PSC pushed through an amendment that allowed residents to start registering their cell phones in addition to their home phones. If entities are found to have violated the law, the companies are subject to a $5,000 fine per call. The list of 16 companies sanctioned on Tuesday can be found in your daily journal or online at thejournal.com. And in sports, the Itawamba Community College fast pitch softball team begins a new season today. The Lady Indians host Bevel State with the first pitch of a doubleheader set for 2 p.m. Last season, ICC won 39 games and advanced to the MACJC State Tournament and the Region 23 Tournament. However, Coach Andy Kirk will have to replace All-Americans Carly Mills, Alex Brown, and Mamie Hollenhead. Key returnee Carolyn Dickens is lost for medical reasons. The Lady Indians pitching staff returns just five innings. They will turn to Delta State transfer Bailey Springfield and freshman Olivia Burns. Meanwhile, the ICC offense does have veteran leadership from Meg Sullivan, Madison Carnes, Mackenzie Piper, Hannah Williams, and Corey Childs. Northeast Mississippi Community College begins its softball season on February 6th with a home doubleheader against Motlow State. And that does it for Newsbreak on this Wednesday. Don't forget that this show is just one of the many online offerings courtesy of the Daily Journal to get you news off the page and on the go. Watch the Prep Rally podcast for the latest in Northeast Mississippi high school sports with hosts Brad Locke and Dalton Middleton. 
Look for a new episode this afternoon in Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or at prepperally.djournal.com. And each story discussed on Newsbreak can be found in your daily journal or online at djournal.com, where you can also catch a new episode of Newsbreak each weekday morning at 7 a.m. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chris Kiefer. Have a great Wednesday.